There's been a recent breakthrough in fertilization technology, a new AI-driven system called STAR, short for Sperm Track and Recovery. It's a new system and it has enabled a couple after almost 19 years of trying and 15 failed IVF cycles to achieve a successful pregnancy. Alice Park joins us now. She's senior health correspondent at Time to discuss her recent story and to really help us understand how all of this works. Alice, very grateful for your time here as always. So doctors at Columbia have reported what they are calling the first pregnancy using a new artificial intelligence system. How did they do it? And what are the basics of the story, Alice, for our viewers to know? Well, one of the biggest uh, factors contributing to infertility, not just in the U.S., but around the world, is male and male factor infertility. About 40 percent of infertility cases are due to male factors. And among those, about 10 percent are due to azospermia or the lack of sperm in a semen sample. So the, the general approach to addressing this is either to use donor sperm or there are techniques, very involved techniques that involve lasers, dyes to kind of identify and uh, try to isolate the sperm. But as you can imagine, they can be pretty damaging to and reduce the quality of the sperm. Uh, another option for men is invasive surgery. So uh, there are really very few um, kind of accessible strategies to address azospermia. But uh, for artificial intelligence, this is something that it does very well. So uh, what this star system does is it's able to take a semen sample that human technicians look at and really can't find any sperm um, and detect the few sperm. Normally, a sample will have hundreds of millions of sperm. Uh, in azospermia, it could be one, it could be a handful. And the AI system can actually scan find that the, the very few sperm in those sample and isolate them so that they can be used to fertilize an egg. In as layman a possible term as you can, um, can you walk us through a bit about how the STAR system works and based on your reporting, what were the real points of breakthrough from the doctors at Columbia University? So for, for them to develop STAR, they had to really put together some engineering uh, strategies as well as a thorough understanding of the biology. So they knew what they were looking for, which is sperm. Sperm is the smallest cell in the human body. So you can imagine how difficult a task that is for even um, the best trained human technicians, even if they're looking under a microscope. So what this system does, is it takes a chip, a little plastic chip, and has two um, fluid channels, if you can think about uh, channels about as thick as a human hair. So very, very small. And the semen sample is um, passed through this channel and the AI algorithm is scanning at 8 million images an hour, this sample and finding where the sperm is. And if it does detect sperm, it is shunting that sperm to another tiny channel. So it's collected in a separate um, sample and that sample is then used to fertilize an egg because the doctors know that the uh, sperm are in that sample. Can you tell us about the couple that you profiled specifically for the story? Obviously it's a deeply personal and a human story. Um, what should our viewers kind of know about who you profiled and maybe a bit about how their faith and persistence really shaped their rather unique journey of nearly two decades? Yeah, they belong to the Orthodox Jewish community and, and um, they obviously had been trying for many years uh, to start a family and they tried everything. They tried um, IVF cycles, as you mentioned, they went through 15 unsuccessful cycles. They considered uh, doing some of the chemical and laser and dye based strategies for identifying sperm, but then decided that that probably um, they tried that a few times, but decided it was probably going to compromise the sperm too much and, and didn't really want to pursue that. Um, the husband did have surgery, so they they did everything until they heard about the star system at Columbia. And, and for them, um, it was, you know, a Hail Mary, I think, uh, Rosie, who, which is not her real name. She, she wants to protect um, her and her husband's privacy. Um, said that they really didn't expect this cycle to be any different than all the others, you know, in which they'd been disappointed. Um, but fortunately for them, this finally worked. Do you get the sense, Alice, from your reporting, this could become more widely adopted uh, even in the next, you know, one to three years, or are we still in the pretty early days 
relative to broader clinical use? I think we're in the early days, but the strategy and the ability to enlist AI and the power of AI, I think really uh, we're just at the beginning of that. As uh, Dr. Zed Williams, the director of the center, um, who was the lead in developing this system said, uh, we're really blind to so many things in infertility care and what causes it and how we might address it. Uh, this is just the first step in addressing other ways that similar AI-based algorithms might be used to improve success rates um, in IVF cycles. What are some of the biggest ethical questions or considerations emerging as doctors and, and scientists and engineers, they're, they're now using things like AI as it pertains to such deeply personal or, or sensitive parts of medicine? Well, I think obviously the basis of AI is data and uh, the AI system, any algorithm uh, based on AI is only as good as the data that it receives. So in order to really understand in this case, um, for example, for the system to isolate sperm, you need to have enough data to teach it, to educate the system what a sperm looks like. So we can distinguish that from the other debris in the semen sample. So clearly having the data and access to that data is going to be key to developing systems like this and ensuring that that data is protected and anonymous and, and remains private so that people's identifying information isn't part of it but yet we learn from it, that's going to be the big challenge, as it is with any other AI-based um, strategy now. Alice, from your reporting, how are doctors and fertility experts reacting? Are, are they optimistic as a result of this? Are they cautious or maybe a mix of both? I think a mix of both because, uh, you know, with anything new, uh, you want to be careful of what the potential downsides might be. And again, privacy issues could be involved with that as this is an AI-based system. But overall, I think if you look at uh, this as the first step in addressing infertility, which affects so many people around the world, um, we're really getting to the point where we can best apply technologies like this to address longstanding problems in biology and infertility is just one of them. And I'm curious what you learned from the journalist perspective about broader artificial intelligence potential in terms of real world healthcare. Well, I think there, there is a lot of potential there, but as I said, you know, we're still at the beginning stages of applying it to medicine. We're seeing it applied in um, uh, radiology and reading images anywhere where you've got a lot of data and you need to analyze that data quickly and accurately is where AI could really um, help. So in radiology, for example, we're seeing uh, countries try to find this happy medium of uh, combining the power of AI and what AI can do quickly and efficiently with the expertise that a human trained radiologist could bring. So there are things like having um, the AI do the initial read, for example, of the screen to find tumors or whatever else you might be looking for, and then having a radiologist then step in for the cases that the AI system flags um, to really make the process a little more efficient. So things like that, I think we're going to be learning um, and developing those strategies as the years go on, but it's clearly going to be a big part of uh, medical care and I think an important part of healthcare in the years to come. Alice Park is the senior health correspondent with Time. It is an incredible story, and your news gathering and profile of the couple, uh, couple in question is really remarkably well done. Uh, Alice, thanks a lot for taking the time to join us, as always, and thanks for being here. Thank you.